Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Our Savior Lutheran Church. Um, just a reminder to sign our pew pads, as it keeps record of um, you worshiping with us, as well as you taking communion on this day. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, you saw a little bit there a QR code um, and I'm talking more of the people that are at home or on Facebook. And if you don't have access to our bulletin, there's a QR code that you can scan to receive that. It's also located on our website. Um, those in the sanctuary, if you want to start bringing in our, your devices and use those instead of the paper bulletin, it'll help us from printing off so many bulletins to be more friendly to our environment. And now, before we get to uh, our worship, before we hear the word or as we hear our word for the day, I'm going to ask you to be ready for some interaction. As we hear in our gospel, Jesus says, come and see. As, as you are able, will you please stand and join me in our call to worship. What offering do we need to bring to God? God does not look for sacrifices or offerings, but, open, but for open ears, like channels for the truth. Grand gestures and offerings are not required, but a heartfelt delight in doing the will of God. 
My friends, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. My Placed a new melody on my tongue. Let us raise our voices and worship God together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess we have wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. the blessing the birth as the rejoicing forward given frame as the thanksgiving to your holy name as be the telling of deeds greatly done yours be the glory O God yours alone the dying rebirth as the rejoicing for nature reclaimed as the thanksgiving to your holy name as be the telling of deeds greatly done yours be the glory Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit, hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our word for the day. Reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, and I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing of vanity. 
Yet surely my case, my cause is with the is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel may be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to rise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you my light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thy says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, one who deeply despised a horror by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prost- and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you, the Word of the Lord. Please join me as we read Psalm 149. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord, I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. I read it from the book of First Credit Call. Corinthians. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, our brother Sothenes, to the church of God that is in Cornelia, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every God. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened amongst you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. As you wait for the revealing of Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end, so that you will may be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, 
Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. chapter. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, On whom, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two dis disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard Jesus speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I'll invite any of the children to, who would like to come up for a children's message to meet me up front here. We'll check online and see if anybody else is joining us. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Good morning, good morning. Oh, my goodness. Come on up, have a seat right here, wherever you can find a place. Yep, that works. Wherever you need. Yep, that works. Perfect. All right. So, I think some of you might be a little too young to, to have done this before. But has anybody gone to the eye doctor? You gone to the eye doctor? Yeah, I have. See, I got glasses. So, that's like a real good clue that I've gone to the eye doctor. So, has anybody ever seen a chart like this? Some of you have, some of you haven't. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get, you ask you to see the first line. You see what, what's on the first line? Can you see that? It's a funny shaped one, but it's a, it's a letter. Is this right here? Oh, we might need to go to the, the, the eye doctor. They're all going. So the first ones, I'll give it to you. It's E. What's this one look like? F, right? There you go. Can you see the next line? F. Yep, yep. You're, good. You're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> so she says the top line doesn't say E. It says 20 slash 20. <laughs> right? 
right? Exactly. Well, you don't have to go to the eye doctor family. Uh, that's, uh, that's perfectly clear now. So they do that to see if we can actually see at a certain distance and then help us see if we need that help, right? So if we can't see those things, then we might need to get glasses, okay? So I'm wearing this stole today. Can you see what it's made out of? Are there any certain patterns that you see in the stole? What do you see? There's like crosses. So if you just see this portion of it, you see a cross, right? Exactly. But sometimes it's hard to see because you stand back and then you kind of get a, an effect of just the lighter and darker colors, right? Sometimes we need these things pointed out to us. So the disciples are walking with Jesus today and he's like, hey, what do you need? And, or what are you looking for? They asked Jesus, where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. Sometimes we need help to see Jesus in our lives. Sometimes we need help to see Jesus in and around us. So as much as we need to see that, sometimes we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus so other people can see the love of God. We can do that by being nice to one another. We can do that by helping people out. We can do that by helping out in our church service. We can do that so many different ways. It all revolves around, revolves around being nice and helping one another. That way people can see the hands and feet of Christ. They can see Jesus in the world. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, help us to see you. Give us the sight through the Holy Spirit that we may see your love in the everyday things that you bless us with. Our friends, our family, our community, the food that you give us. Help us to see you in all good things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may return to your seats. Thank you very much for coming up. They're always smarter than you think. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ to you today. I give thanks to my God always for you because you, well, because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. Amen. I also give thanks to you for allowing me to, be, to at least participate in the Wabash Pastoral Leadership Program. Some of you may remember that this past week I spent Monday through Wednesday in Crawfordsville at Wabash College attending the first session of the program. It's a program funded by the Lilly Foundation that works with pastors of Indiana. Their goal is to create more healthy communities through forming more healthy churches. Seems like an incredible task, but what they propose is not recreating the wheel Rather, shifting church leadership, community leadership, by 1% or 2% through educating us on dealing with adaptive changes. 1% to 2% might not sound like much, but the Wabash Pastoral Leadership Program realizes the challenges facing the church and the communities in which they are found. And over time, that 1% to 2% can change the whole trajectory of where things are going. So as we read in John, when Jesus notices two of John the Baptist's disciples following him, he says to them, what are you looking for? Now this might seem a little out of the ordinary, but usually in Scripture, Jesus is the one expected to have the answers, not asking the questions. So Jesus catches the two disciples following him and like two students sneaking around the halls during class caught without a hall pass, Jesus addresses, addresses them first. He says, what are you looking for? And they reply, uh, Rabbi, teacher, uh, have, um, mm, wait, where are you staying? A better question might have been, are you really the Messiah? Are you the son of God? Can we see a miracle? Rumor has it that you're turning water into wine. But the best they come up with is, 
where are you staying? And Jesus, instead of saying, at the sixth motel at the right, I'll leave the lights on for you, just checking to see if you're awake. Jesus changes the whole dynamic of the interaction between them. And in doing so, changes the trajectory of the discussion. Jesus says, come and see. Jesus sets this up as an introduction to evangelism. He is selecting his disciples. And what better way to introduce them to evangelism than to allow these inquisitive followers to realize who Jesus is and what Jesus is doing by witnessing it themselves. Come and see, Jesus replies. And they spend the day with him. But it's more than that. Jesus is asking them to come and see because by the end of the day, Jesus knows they will search for others to tell them what they have noticed about Jesus. Now, how many of you honest Lutherans got a little nervous when I said the word evangelism? I know it's not in our fiber. It's not in our Lutheran heritage to evangelize about our faith to others outside the walls of the church. But most Lutherans, like myself, are willing to share our faith when asked. Most of us are not willing to go out into the public and begin our faith conversations with friends, let alone strangers. But here's an opportunity to make a simple 1% to 2% change in how we evangelize for the sake of the gospel. Evangelism is not difficult. As we learn in our reading today, three simple steps, which I first heard from Dr. David Lose, to energize and evangelize, we only need three simple steps. Notice, share, and invite. So first notice, as I shared last week with the stars, the wise people followed the star to find the newborn Christ child, and I had stars taped on the, well, they're still there, the altar, the lectern, the baptismal font. And then we explained that the church is, as we gather, is another place where we find Jesus, and we know through the Holy Spirit Jesus is with and within each one of us. Jesus is always with us, reaching out, saying, come and see. So, I ask, what do you notice? Where do you notice God or God's work in your daily life? Our, our bishop, Bishop Bill Goffian, is famous for asking this question when he opens up most meetings with a time going around the table, individually, asking everyone, where have you seen God or God's work in their lives in the past week or the last 24 hours. And even as a pastor, I have to admit, there are times when I am uncomfortable because I'm not prepared to answer. One would think a pastor might be more in tune with God's work in the world, but no matter who you are, it takes time and practice to notice. God's work in the world is abundant. We simply need to slow down and spend reflective time noticing. So take some time right now Think about where you have seen God's work in the world. It could be in nature, a sunrise or sunset, seeing animals frolicking about. But I would ask you to go a little deeper in finding an example, something more with more context. Did someone lend a helping hand this week? Did you see something on the news that was good? Did you have a moment of joy that made you stop and take note? Did the actions or words from someone else place you on a path or a new path to have a better day? You have a couple of minutes right now. Go ahead and think about that. Those of you online, go ahead and put a comment if you're on Facebook or maybe even a uh, chat in the chat box on Zoom. The next minute is yours.
How'd you do? Did you think of something? If so, hold on to it. And if you didn't, maybe it would be easier to think of somewhere locally and or in your life you wish you could see God's work more evidently. Our second step is to share, getting back to our, our gospel. In John 1, 41, it says, He, Andrew, first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. After the two disciples noticed where Jesus was staying, where Jesus was abiding, where Jesus was going to be and would remain, they noticed that Jesus and realized that Jesus now was God with them. And Jesus would remain with them. So Andrew sought out his brother Simon and told him what they noticed. Yes, he shared the good news of what he noticed with somebody else. So now... Find a friendly stranger somewhere close to you or not so close to you, if you dare. Someone you are not related to. And tell that person where you saw God at work in your life or in the world. If you couldn't come up with something like that, share where you wish God's work would be more prevalent. Those in person, please go ahead and find a friendly stranger. Those on Zoom, again, write your responses in the chat box. So if you're not sure how to use the chat option, you should see this icon somewhere on the screen. And if not, you can place your cursor over your picture so it should show up, and then click on it. It should bring up this window. You click on you can click on the arrow and select Randy or just send it to everyone. And other Zoomers will be able to see it too. Those on Facebook, please write it as a comment. I will not share names unless you specify I can. Just remember, there's a few second delay on the Facebook feed, so I might not see it right as you send it. Pause. We'll see what comes up. All right, everyone. It's hard to interrupt good conversation with what I'm continuing to do, but it's, it's all right. 
So some of the um, additions in our Zoom meeting or Zoom worshipers said that saw someone volunteer to help someone in need. When I heard a family member responding to his grandfather's empathy or empathetically. Someone wrote, help healing our, healing our political divide. And the Lord allows us to keep on living each and every day. At this time, I don't see any Facebook responses, but that might change as there's a delay in it. I want to ask you all, I want to thank you first for stepping totally out of your comfort zone and doing something different during worship. But what did you hear? As you were comfortable, I want to know, and we won't use any names, but what did you hear as people shared how they noticed God in the world? Just shout them out. Kindness. Wonderful. Connection. Connection. Yes. Again, thank you for stepping out of your comfort zones. It's different. But we are called to do different things as followers of Christ. Now we are down to our last step. Inviting. As Andrew noticed Jesus and went to Simon to share that news, he then invited him. In verses 41 through 42, verses 42, he brought Simon to Jesus and looked at him and said, Jesus looked at him and said, you are the son, Simon, you are Simon, son of God. You are to be called Cephas. Andrew went out and found his brother, shared the good news of what he had noticed, and then invited him to come along. And it's time to invite people to church, or at least to invite them into the conversation of where you see and where you notice God's love in your life or in the world. And I know this seems uncomfortable, but if you notice God in your life, and it brings you joy, why wouldn't you want to share that with those you care about? Because they will then experience that joy along with you. It's not a huge leap that I'm asking you to take. I mean, if you're willing to share memes and cartoons on Facebook that make your friends laugh, why wouldn't you want to share God's work in your life or in the world and invite them into that joy as well? I mean, the least you can do is share our Facebook page. If inviting them to worship is way too awkward, even though we know that God is here, maybe you want to tell them about what God is doing through OSLC, where you see God's work through the purchase of the rental properties next door, because now we get to dream about how they can be used for the community. Maybe you want to invite them to Hearts and Crafts, which starts today at 1 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall, and again on Wednesday afternoon. Maybe you want to invite them to meet Pastor Kristen, our new PLM pastor, or tell them about PLM and its ministry. Maybe you want to invite them because we have children volunteering to read and help during our service. Maybe you want to invite them to hear that they are loved unconditionally, no matter what just as they are. It's these types of little simple changes, noticing, sharing, inviting, the one or two percent change that can shift our outlook on a day and make them brighter. After all, it's not really us. God is the one that takes these simple things that seem in insignificant. These, these things are what God always has been able to turn into wonderful life-giving things. 
a noticing, a sharing, an invite, an invitation. God uses these little things. Just like a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine, a little bit of water, and makes them extraordinary. God will use our simple changes, our initial attempts to share our faith and create something beautiful. We are called to notice God in the world. We are called to share what we see. And then we are called to invite those. And as we do, we all participate in the, God, in the love of God that God is sharing with us each and every day. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able and sing along with us our hymn of the day, hymn number 311, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Please join me in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend on them and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need, especially Jason, Phil, Shirley and Eric, Rosalie, Jeff, Denise, Janet, Helmet, Carol, Richard and Carly, Victoria, Jennifer, Jeanette, Suzanne, Shelby, Eric M, David O, Gary, Kevin, Nancy, Anne, Mary, Sean, Mayor Dennis, Mary M, Jane, Omarion, John M, Robert M, Sue W, Tom, Jim W, Peter H, Helen, and Steve. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it feels like a sharp sword or polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. In every place and time you have sanctified your people, we praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment and share that peace with one another as you feel comfortable and as you are able. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I don't know. We don't have one anymore. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> Peace be with you as well as peace be with you all online. As you finish up, you may be seated. Just a word as we continue into our meal portion. Um, there are cups with wine and also with fruit juice. The fruit juice is located in the middle rings of our offering or our communion trays. There are also gluten-free wafers if you prefer that as well. When you come up for um, communion, first the communion assistants and I will commune one another, and then uh, there will be a time for those who would like to commune in the pews to do that, as well as you online, and then we'll invite all those to come up and receive communion near the altar. Again, it is because of your graciousness, your generosity, that we are able to be the hands and feet of Christ in our community. So we 
appreciate all that you do and continue to do. Um, your ties you can drop off in the office or put in the mail or use the QR code on the screen. It's a very helpful way of continuing God's work in the world because you are so generous. We will continue with our offering Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We magnify you, we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. one, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ has come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill them with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
So come to this table, which now extends into our homes. You who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. You may be seated. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now for those who would like to commune in your pews and those of you at home, please prepare the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And now the wine or juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now we have one communion assistant, so I'd like to start with this side of the uh, sanctuary. If you would come up, and then after the last person on this side comes up, I would like to invite this side. So if you can come over this way, yep, yep.
you please stand for a blessing? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. An invitation for this week as you head out, as you go through your days, notice God's work in your life. Share it with someone and invite them to join you whether it be at church or in the conversation, in prayer, or in joining God's work in the world. Let us sing now, O Morning Star, How Far and Bright, verses 1, 3, and 6. And receive this blessing once more. As you leave this place, remember, God who chose you before God who chose you before your birth, who calls you and knows you by name, now sends you out into the world to bring light to those in darkness, comfort to those who grieve, and hope to those who despair. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among you and within you as you seek to do God's will. Amen. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. This concludes our worship service. Those are on Facebook. If you are able to stick around for a few announcements, I invite you to have a seat. Um, those on Zoom, please stick around for those announcements as well as you are able. <laughs>